South Campley Canterbury Aviation Heritage Centre, Pierce and Pioneers Gallery, Historic Control Tower, they served with on a museum, heritage aircraft collection, restoration workshop and a research library. South Pole, North Pole, Sydney, Chatham Islands, Cape Horn, Cape Town, London and Tokyo. In memory of Richard Pearce of Waitawi, South Canterbury, to commemorate his contribution to early aviation. And this is the airport, Richard Pearce Airport. There's a plane leaving there at the moment, an Air New Zealand plane, uh, that comes in here every day. And it's uh, heading off to Wellington. Talking to Jack. Is that you, Jack? Yeah. Jack Mellop. G'day, Ron. How are you? Good. What do you do in the organisation, Jack? Oh, I'm past president of this group at the moment, Ron, but oh, yeah? um, still messing around here with the boys, doing a bit of restoration work. Good on you. Yeah. One of the workers, eh? What have we got here, Jack? What you're looking at there is um, one of our guys did that impression of what it was like at Levels Airport in the 1930s. That was the first airport for Timaru, and that was situated directly opposite the race course, and that hangar is still part of the building complex, which are, which are part of the um, sand and shingle and, and uh, the group that are still working for it. Now, the hangar was big enough to contain about five or six aircraft in its day, and it's still there in its entirety. The aircraft that you see there is one of the aircraft of New Zealand Tourist Air Travel, which was a very early charter company which operated out of Timaru in the 1930s, and they operated all the way between Invercargill and uh, Queenstown and Auckland. What's this, Jack? This is a replica of the Richard Pierce machine, which he flew from Waitoi on the 31st of March 1903. It is a low-wing aeroplane with the aircraft, a high-wing aircraft rather, with the pilot sitting down inside the airframe and a full set of controls. Now, at this time, this aircraft's design was far in excess of anything else that the world had ever seen. Uh, even on today's standard, the resemblance to what this aircraft is with today's is the same. The same situation with the high wing and the engine mounted in the front, pilot sitting in a, in a composed area with a full set of controls. Richard, of course, had never seen an aeroplane before, so what he has achieved here was, was quite remarkable. Perhaps the most remarkable thing about it is the engine from which he der derived uh, about five and a half litre of power from an engine which he could carry away and, and, and mount it on a, on a bench to work on. He made this engine of, and it was of his own design and he made it from parts that he found around the farm. It's a reciprocating engine and although it's only two cylinders, it's got a four-stroke action. Quite a remarkable aeroplane. Now what's this here, Jack? That is a replica of the Wright Brothers 1902 glider. That was the second year that they went to Kitty Hawk and played with aeroplanes, and that's what they took with them that year. It was a very successful machine as a glider, but you can see that the dimensions of it is quite large, and it really was just a glider. And to control it, they had to lie down on their stomachs and shift their, their rear end to, to, to have wing warping of the, of the controls. So very basic, but nonetheless, it was very... Uh, beneficial to them in learning to fly. In fact, in 1902, they did 1,000 flights in that machine, and so they went back in 1903 with a pretty good idea of how to fly. So, so what did Richard Pearce do that the Wright brothers didn't do? Well, Richard Pearce was successful in flying first, as we're absolutely certain of that, but what Richard did was made a machine which was very conventional, even on today's standards. Whereas if you compare with that machine up there, the Wright brothers were uh, in a different type of um, machine altogether. They had a biplane. They did not have 
uh, controls that they could sit down and operate. They lay on their stomach and they operated the controls by moving their backsides on wing warping. Um, but nevertheless, what they did was a highly forward step in the progress of aviation. What have we got here, Jack? This is an engine which was made by the university group of, uh, in Auckland. It is a, a replica of a PS engine, but not quite as, uh, as he made it, but it was exactly on the same principles. So one can see that, it, that it's got two barrels, and it still has the same principle, where a, 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 um, a discharge will take place at each end of these barrels. So although it's only a two-cylinder, it is nonetheless a four-stroke engine. And that's what Pierce painted. Is that right? I'm in a little country district in South Canterbury called White Towie. And before me is the Richard Pierce replica of the plane that he flew, flew, which is believed to be the first flight ever made in the world. Jack Mellop has just told us that the difference between this, the Wright brothers and the Richard Pierce plane is. Richard Pierce has had a motor. There's the motor up the front there, just like a conventional aeroplane. And um, the Wright brothers, they had just a glider. So uh, the argument goes on. This is the first plane ever to fly in the world. Richard Pierce, 1877. To 1953, New Zealand's pioneer aviator. This monument commemorates the first powered flight to be made by a British citizen in a heavier than air machine. Most evidence indicates this flight took place on the 31st of March 1908 and ended. Uh, crashing into a under a hedge on this site. So there it is, ladies and gentlemen, South Canterbury's Richard Pierce. The locals claimed he was the first man to fly in a heavier than mach air machine, one with a motor. The remarkable thing about Richard Pierce, he never saw an aeroplane. Everything came out of his head. He never actually saw any kind of an aeroplane. So there we are. Come to New Zealand and see this historic site. The first aeroplane ever to fly. And we are proud of it. We're at Waitoi at the moment and we're looking at the original homestead where Richard Pierce was born. And it's made of limestone painted limestone and uh, one of those rooms there that would be where Richard Pierce uh, was brought up. The, uh, the house is about 19, what year would that be? 1888. 1888 when it was built, a long time ago. We finish our story at the Richard Pierce Road. I'd like to thank Jack Melhop for his contribution to this video. It's not easy talking into a video when, uh, when the camera's on you. Um, I made a couple of mistakes. The, um, I said on the plaque out at the Waitoi that uh, it was 2008. It certainly wasn't 2008. It was 1903. 1903 when... Uh, Richard Pierce flew the aeroplane, his, his aeroplane, the 31st of March 1903. Yes, yeah, so keep into my ch tuned into my videos. I do one e at least one every day. Sometimes I do up to three a day, and put them on YouTube. And one day I hope to have a thousand videos on YouTube. That's my goal. So uh, until next time, then I'll see you later.